Hey everybody, it's February 22nd. You're here at the um, DEI, Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Working Group for Chaos. Um, just a quick reminder, we try to do this every meeting. Um, this meeting is under uh, the Chaos Code of Conduct. So just keep that in mind and use your best self here. And also um, this meeting is to talk about um, diversity, equity and inclusion in, in chaos, in metrics, um, whatever kind of pops up around those topics. Um, the agenda's in the minutes, but if our agenda's in the minutes, agenda's in the chat. I got it. I'm here. I'm with it. It is um, in the minutes <laughs> too, I suppose. It is. Yes, you're right. <laughs> you Thanks, are Matt. correct. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to share here. And if you don't mind to put your name in the um, in the agenda here under attendees, that would be great. If you don't want to, that's also fine. And just also a reminder, you can keep your cameras off here at, at Chaos. We we really don't mind at all. And you're welcome to just chat in the chat window if you don't even feel like turning your mic on. That's also totally fine. Um, first order of business is to uh, pick a facilitator for next week. So do I have any volunteers? We do have documentation that will help you if you've never done it before. So um, don't be shy if it's something you're considering. And I will say, if you've never done it before, we will help. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to like build out the agenda. You don't like, uh -huh. we will totally help you. Yeah. Any takers? Any takers? Well, I'm always, I can always do it, but. All right. Well, Matt, looks like you're on deck. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Sure. Um, the next update is that we have a, a tour guide update. If you remember, this has been an idea that was floated from a newcomer, I believe, back in November, and we've kind of been kicking it around for a little while since then. Um, the purpose of this tour guide group would be to um, be able to provide a little one on one assistance for folks who are new to chaos and kind of struggling trying to find their way. Because um, right now, mostly it's myself and Ruth and maybe a few others, uh, maybe one or two others that kind of field a lot of those requests and a lot of that that um, traffic. So we were trying to help spread the spread the love a little <laughs> and then like build a team out that can help with that. And we decided to call ourselves tour guides because we're going to help um, folks find their way. Uh, Mary Blessing has been kind enough to agree to um, to lead this team and really kind of build this out. She has been such a great asset in in chaos, um, extremely welcoming and um, helpful to newcomers already. Um, and she does have a community management background, so I'm super happy to um, be kind of handing this off to her to kind of run. Um, there is a Slack channel, um, I think. I'm just going to scroll down here for a minute. I don't know if it's in here or maybe from before. Here we go. There's a doc here. Yep. See, here's Mary um, already commenting. We have a doc here that we had just been dumping some ideas in. Here were the folks that had originally stepped up to be a part of that. If you are interested in participating, just reach out to Mary Blessing. She'll add you to, we have like a private Slack channel that we set up while we kind of sort all this out and <laughs> figure out how we're going to work it. Um, and then she's going to take all of our little notes here and put them into some nice documentation for everybody. Um, I know there's been concern too. I'll just say real quickly. Um, I know there's been concern about the uh, volume of, of requests um, because we do have quite a few newcomers to chaos pretty consistently. We we pretty much have two to three new members every day that come to chaos. Not everybody sticks around, of course, but um, we do have you know a, a pretty fair, consistent um flow and so um there is a potential for that group to be kind of overwhelmed with requests <laughs> for help so what we decided in the last um meet well ruth and mary blessing and i met to talk kind of talk things out a little bit as far as implementation goes and we're going to start with um mentioning at the end of our onboarding calls which happen once a month because we kind of that way we know that it's someone that's 
super interested in being part of the community. They've, they've taken that step to join the, the call or watch the video. Um, they've, they've gone through that quick start for newcomers. So um, there's a little bit of a barrier, just, a, just enough, <laughs> just enough to kind of help us um, sort things out first. And then eventually we, we will add that to the Slack bot. That's, that's kind of our next step. If, if this works the way it should, and we feel like we can handle a larger load, we'll add it to that newbie Slack bot. And as a matter of fact, Precious A has already written the code, or not Precious, uh, someone, oh, I forget who, someone already wrote the code. Precious A already looked at it. And so it's ready to go. <laughs> They're ahead of us. We're not quite ready yet. So there is a PR out there for that um, that's ready when, whenever we are. So does um, the bot say come to the newcomer session or does the bot say ask for a tour guide? I need to double check. I think it okay. says uh, ask for a tour guide. Okay. So we can adjust it to say whatever we wanted to say. Yeah, I like the idea of having people attend that meeting first and then speaking about it there. Yeah, just to kind of help like mm -hmm. funnel folks a little bit better. Yeah. And that would also mean like kind of not broadcasting this super broadly. Mm -hmm. like That's, in, mm -hmm. in the general channel or the newcomer channel because i think if we put something like this in the newcomer channel then we'd be we'd hit that problem that you're talking about yeah agreed agreed and so yeah we kind of want to i mean if you know and maybe someday we'll scale it a little broader but um for now <laughs> just until we kind of get our bearings we can yeah. figure out <laughs> yeah are there any other questions comments about that. When is this going to start? Um, that is going to be up to Mary Blessing. Um, I think pretty soon. Um, it's just a matter of her kind of documenting things and um, making sure we have all okay. of our loose ends tied up. Okay. So yeah, we can check with her. I, I don't, I don't think there's like a firm date in place for that. All right, well, we'll go ahead and move on. Um, the next one is the README in the DEI uh, GitHub repository, which I think I put it in there, but I think, Matt, you were wanting to address this also. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And I just think we need to, um, this came up in the community call yesterday, just address README's in the just every working group. And it's mostly just to take a look at them to make sure that what they say is correct. Um, so just for example, in that participate, just making sure that that time is correct, which it looks like it is, uh, making sure that, that tiny URL goes to the meeting minutes, you know, just stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Is this something we want to do? in the meeting here today, or do we want to um, like give it as an action item for someone or how do you, what do you, how do you want to go forward? Um, maybe we could look at it just a little bit today. Actually, could you go back to the minutes that you clicked on? Mm -hmm. Was that, oh, that was, that, yeah, the, it was, I, I, had gone, I had gone away. I was sorry. Bit. Yeah, it went right to the minutes. So we're good. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Maybe, yeah, so then our focus areas. Um, Let me just open the spreadsheet to make sure. Sure. Here. Working from. And we can make action items, but maybe we could just spend a little bit of time. Yes. Yeah, here's the, um, oops, that's not the right one. This is it. Here's the link if anybody wants to look at it also on their screen and not on mine. Event diversity, governance, leadership, project and community. Event diversity, governance, leadership, project and community. That looks good. And they should go to. And then do they go, yeah, where do they take us to the appropriate? Yep, that looks good. Yeah, these, I don't know. We, we would maybe have to look at these also. Because mm -hmm. we don't really 
but you know what? I don't, this doesn't really show up anywhere on the website except for <clears throat> here, I don't believe. So, um, but we should probably still just double check that these all. And I guess the question would be: Do we want to still retain this focus area design? Yeah. On the, because the only reason I ask is like OSPO has kind of just collapsed everything with focus mm -hmm. areas now that we have just because the way that the website is set up now with the topic areas, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. those, those panels, we don't really need the focus areas as a way to represent. Yeah, these. Right. And so I'm wondering if we even need to, like on the repo, like start making these distinctions. I don't know. What do you think? Do you have any thoughts anyway? I would love to hear what others other folks think. I'm I'm all for just taking these out. Um, but I don't. Yeah. It, hmm. I mean, we'll have to keep the file folder structure the same. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that might be confusing. I do. You know, we'll have to keep that. Because that's where our metrics end up mm -hmm. kind of landing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let me let's maybe let's talk about this next week, but maybe just something like to think about if we want to represent all of our focus areas on this in the README file and what it means to keep them and if we got rid of them, what that would mean as well. Um, does that link go to the right spot? The released metrics. Mm, that goes under. It how does not. Do it? it does not. Okay. okay. Anita has her hand up as well. Yeah, go for it, Anita. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at the README and down to the contributors. And I think we've had like so many contributors like recently and um, to make this more like accommodate more room, we could try to use. Um, so there's this software, I'd be like, yeah, it's like a software that it lists out all the people that have made like contributions to the particular repository, like um, brings out the picture of their, of their GitHub um, profile image. Um, I think you can find it on this repository here. So like that will cover more persons because we've had like more persons within the community of late. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, oh, I see. Oh, that's nice. I wonder how they add that. Graphs. There's some kind of graphs they're using. Does As anybody know how to do that automatically? Look, it says down below. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could use that. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. Ah, oh, how awesome. Yes, let's do it. What do you think? Yeah. There we go. So just take all of this out. Um, it's down below. Yeah, down where they're like the rub names. I see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. So what you just generated is not the same as everybody that's on that list. So yeah, Josh has his hands too. Yeah, go for it, Josh. Yeah, I actually I was going to speak to what what Matt just raised. I think uh, if there's a way to do this that captures folks who have contributed but not made commits to the repo um because i think that's how it's identifying contributors um and i know github does have some fancy ways to uh, uh attribute things call people contributors who haven't made commits but maybe there's a little bit of workaround needed to make that a fit but it i do love the tool. oh sorry josh you broke up a little did we lose you we can't hear you, Josh. OK. 
Okay. Um, so we may we might want to think about that a little bit more of how yes. what the like flow is to add folks in and how we make sure that it's like up to date. Um, because honestly, like uh, Don and Georg are still pretty much around. Um, Daniel and Emma mm, like oh, to call right them in, me. Right mm -hmm. in terms of this meeting. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. We might want to just think about that. And then I see Kevin has uh, given us the link. So let me just. I, stop. I got that. Oh, I you did already. Okay. In the minutes yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then I think the other thing was the. Um... So I just. I mean, I guess I also when I look at this. Oh well, I'm sorry. Let's you finish your thought here. No, 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 I was just going to keep going because this is um, like this stuff criteria, like, I don't know if that's really true. Uh, no, no, like, we don't, we don't <laughs> really have, right? Like, I don't know. No, how we do we have anything in the handbook that even differentiates like what a maintainer and core contributor is? <sighs> it just seems to change all the time. It does change. Um, and then this part two is not yeah, right. That's right. So yeah, this needs a little bit of work. Uh, so AI, what was that section contributing? Contributing needs work. Contributors need work. <laughs> like, like pretty much every section except for license needs work <laughs> and the copyright at the end needs and the copyright better. oh that even needs work because it's 23 yeah <laughs> um maybe could we maybe bring the maintainer contributor core contributor question to the community call next week yes would love that. And maybe before that, we could do a little bit of research, like in the handbook, mm -hmm. if we say anything. Yeah, that would be good. Like, I think the only thing that we have and that we're working on is that um, path to contribution, which is like the quick start, and then there's a page for participating, and then there's another step, another page um, for contributing. But that's not the same as a core contributor versus the maintainer. So. We did have a path to leadership document, uh, but it was uh, not very descriptive, so I think we jumped it. Uh, yeah, I, I vaguely remember it still that. Exist? It doesn't exist anymore. I don't think so. I mean, we can look. I don't think it does. It's not great. Come on, search. Uh, I mean, it might be under. No, I don't think it's under contributing. Roles and responsibilities. This one was a weird one too. Maybe this is sort of it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think this is even really. Okay. I think this was an artifact left over from the old handbook that um, okay. Shoya and Ruth might have tweaked a little, um, but might not have you know, been comfortable just taking it all out either. Every, you know what I'm saying? Every, every like, yeah, I do. Every question leads to like a whole yes. series of. <laughs> I know, right? We just keep going down these rabbit holes. Of uh, stuff to be done. <laughs> right. Well, this is, I mean, we don't have to solve it here, but now we kind of yeah. know that this is probably something we need to like take a look at. Yeah. Let me just drop this link in here. We can look at that. And I, yeah, we'll look for that path to leadership doc as well. 
I don't think that document was very good. So if, if we need a Pathco leadership document, I would recommend just starting from scratch. I don't, I don't yeah. think there's anything usable in it. The one that she was just showing. No, no, no the, the, the one, one that she oh, was going to look for. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, some of the action items above I can start taking on, which is just like rework the contributing area, update the copyright, and then I think the contributors and maintainers, and then the focus area stuff, like TBD, and, and the link to the metrics. Yeah, maybe those are things we, um, the focus areas and the contributors, we uh, just leave for now until we think about it a little more. What do you think? Yeah. Jumping, jumping back on the, the focus area, just think real quick, because I saw Josh had made a comment on in the chat that he, he found the, uh, that he thought the focus areas were helpful when he first joined. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm kind of of the opinion that if the, if the focus areas help the if the the focus areas help the the working group kind of coordinate the work they're doing, then I, I think they definitely have value. Uh, I know they don't they, they don't align with the with the website really, uh, but I don't think they have to. So it's kind of two different things: kind of the the way we present the metrics versus the way we build the metrics. So. I don't, I don't know if it's overly confusing to other people to have focus areas, but it, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, I think those are, I think those are completely fair points. Like when I do look at it, the repository, like to what Kevin was just talking about and Josh, what you brought up as well. Like, I mean, they, they do get us to the metrics. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. All right. Anything else with this topic? Oh, good. That's helpful. I just a few little things that we can do for next week. Okay. Um, the next uh, two updates were my action items that I did not do. So yeah, <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> I'll work on it today. I promise. I promise. Um, I did talk to Enoch. Is Enoch on the call? He was. But he was. He no, yeah. might have dropped off. Yeah. Um, and about adding these metrics to the bot. And so I'm going to make the changes. Um, I started making the changes, but I'm going to make them in a different way now. So um, it was good that I had a good chat with him about that before I just okay. did it. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so hopefully by the end, well, I don't know. I want to say by the end of the week, but it's really close. Maybe middle of next week, we'll have those added to the okay. application. And then, have, did you hear it? Have you heard anything back from the events team at the LF? I have not. Um, okay. have not, sadly. Um, I don't know if it got to people or not. I don't really have a yeah. way to know that. So I'm a little stuck, but um, yeah. We, we talked, Enoch and I talked about too, something that we need to solve and we don't know how to solve this yet is collecting direct emails from folks who submit applications because we don't do that right now. We don't, we don't collect their name or their um, information, their email address. Okay. Well, the only thing we ask is their GitHub username. And the reason is because we didn't want to put that in a public issue that everybody can see. Like, they're, you know what I mean? Yep. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can collect that information without posting it publicly, but store it someplace securely for us to use in case we need to reach out directly to the event organizers. So, yeah. Okay. Still thinking about that, but. Okay. Is this the form that's on the website? Mm -hmm. The application. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can probably take a look at that if you'd like. So, um, I mean, it's it's easy enough to grab that information uh, from a form on the website. Uh, I know the, the form that's there now was built 
uh, was built by Matt Cantu. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could either we could either tweak that form, or we could even add a uh, add kind of a secondary form at the beginning uh, that could capture the data and, and send it elsewhere. That's a good capture idea. The data that you're wanting and send it elsewhere. Yeah, because um, I know I know like where it would go in the form, and I know how to how to change that. But I just mm -hmm. didn't know like where to put that information not in the issue. So yeah, that would be good. Honestly, if it's if it's completely new information, I would rather than even editing that other form. I I might say the easiest route would probably be to just create kind of a secondary form and put it at the put it at the top before they go through and they identify their project. So, so they put their name and their email in and if that yeah. makes sense. It does make sense. Um, we'll have to think about that flow a little, but yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm just going to drop that in here. Oops. Okay. Well, let, let me know if you want me to take a closer look at that. Okay. Oops. Yeah, because there have been times, even before we wanted to start this event organizer group, that like the event organizer hasn't responded. And I think it's just because they're not getting the GitHub notifications. So that we just need a secondary way to, you know, reach out to them and and have them have that that connection. So yeah, that would be good. We'll think about that a little more. Elizabeth, I just sent you a direct message in the oh, chat. Oh, I see that. Yes. So for reaching out to Annie. Okay. She's great. Okay. That would be good. Um, yeah. All right. What else is on our agenda? We have a little bit of time left. Mm, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> if we don't have anything else, I'm not going to make y'all sit here and stare at each other for the next 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, the DEI, yeah, working group, I think just we meet weekly. Uh, it's, it seems like it just always kind of progresses real nicely. So, yeah. Did we want to take a look at the event location inclusivity metric? Yeah, let me look here. Oops, let me go back to sharing. Event location city. Yeah, this was an action item, I think, for, for Matt and myself. Where we said we would look at this, which we didn't. So. Okay, gotcha. So I, I know I know Josh was editing on it. So. Also looking at it, yeah, yeah. And Josh did, yeah. Okay. Well, never mind then. Yeah. No, it's good. I think um, I think it's just a matter of retrofitting it to the old or to the new template because this was made when we had a, a very old template is that that's right matt right yeah i think so i think that was one of the things we saw and we just there are things we need to add from the new template you can mm -hmm. see like the there's like no um disclaimer disclaimers mm -hmm. yeah ethical mm -hmm. Um, Delight is also reminding me that we have a design for 100 badges, which I think we have met that. I should have I should have said that earlier. I think we've met our 100 badge, a uh, 100th badged event. So maybe we should work with the communications working group to figure out like what how we want to announce that and make a big deal about it because it's kind of cool. Um, Delight, would you mind putting a link in here in the uh, chat to that badge design? or to that award, that'd be great. Because Delight designed this for us. And I, I saw the thread go through, but I, I haven't looked at the design yet. Would this be something we'd put out like on LinkedIn and mm. Twitter and yeah. all those places? Okay, yeah. right on. Ben, you'll be, ben you'll will be so excited to use this. Like we'll, we'll use the spreadsheet 
or else we you might can, use you can it. put it in there. That's yes. it. We got a campaign. It's a campaign. I love it. <laughs> it is pretty nice though. I mean, I my hope is is that like saying that we've done a hundred events might be like send a signal to other events who have been thinking about it or didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it just sends a nice signal that this isn't new. <laughs> we've been really working on this for a long time. And we're real thoughtful. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think Delight, you're still looking for that, right? It might also be in the design Slack if anybody's. Oh, there it is. All right. Yes, love it. What do you all think? Love it. Thank you, Dwight. Oh, oh, here's the okay. Thank you for badging. Is that the here. same or is that different? Hundredth badges. Oh yeah, they changed it to a hundred badges. Oh, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I love that. Awesome job, delight. You did that. Kingsley was involved too. Yeah. Congratulations to both of you for doing that. We really appreciate that, and we will definitely use that in our social media campaign. Love it. I'm going to put this link here in a minute so you don't forget. And then we have our communications meeting tomorrow. So we'll bring this up and figure out how to, how to spread the word. Awesome. All right. Now you're done. Now we're done. Yes, I think. <laughs> I think we're good. I hope everybody has a good rest of your day. Stay warm if it's cold where you are. Yes. Stay dry if it's raining where you are. Um, Bro, Josh, get out your cross country skis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get your scarves. San Francisco. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right. We will see everybody later. Have a good rest of your week, everybody. See you next Take week. Take care, everybody. Bye.